at the moment, all of us are talking about building back better, uh, about what we do post the pandemic to ensure that we are not found in a similar position to that which we were in in February uh, and March uh, this year. I, I don't know how much uh, advance we will make on this wonderful notion of building back better, but I do think uh, we need to make an attempt uh, to ensure that uh, we are uh, engaging with the world differently, that we are serving uh, our populations uh, uh, differently, and that indeed <clears throat> we use somewhat of the enforced collaboration uh, to do much more as the global community to, to change the world for the better. But let me then greet you as a, as a chairperson of our BRICS think tank, um, as well as all <clears throat> the members of the think tank who are joining us uh, this evening, and of course, the National Institute uh, for Humanities and Social Sciences. I see uh, Dr. Musueto is with us, and really glad that she is. Uh, and of course, all those uh, who join us on the digital uh, uh, resource. Let me thank the uh, BRICS think tank of South Africa, as well as the NIHSS for providing this platform for engagement between academia, civil society, and government on key uh, current uh, issues. I'm really pleased to be given an opportunity to present uh, a lecture on the BRICS approach to the post-COVID-19 uh, recovery. We uh, participate as South Africa's government and uh, various stakeholders very actively uh, in the BRICS uh, uh, formation. Our participation continues to emphasize cooperation, which should contribute directly and indirectly to the priorities we've highlighted in this family uh, of a better South Africa, a better Africa, and a better world through uh, synchronizing programs adopted in regional and international fora. So when we come into the uh, BRICS forum, it is not as South Africa without an agenda. Uh, we bring in uh, the items that form part of our policy framework, such as the African Union's Agenda 2063, as well as uh, perspectives that are developed by BRICS as a forum uh, uh, on its own. So we would not leave at any point our continent and its goals and objectives behind as we work within uh, the BRICS forum. We also believe that BRICS provides a strategic platform to articulate and pursue key domestic and foreign policy objectives at the national regional, south to south, and global levels. So what happens is through having this rather small forum of five countries, we are able then to form a unity which speaks with similar voices, not all is the same, but similar voices at a range uh, of fora throughout uh, the international community. I, I stress this point because I think it is important uh, at this introductory level to state that while for South Africa, BRICS constitutes a forum that could be a catalyst for the promotion of a global progressive agenda, there isn't a constant static and shared perspective on all global issues. So I don't wish to create the impression that at every point where we interface at the international level, we have a similar viewpoint on all matters. There are uh, areas of difference and uh, one has to uh, state this upfront. Nonetheless, this does not detract from its importance as a critical forum of international collaboration. The BRICS approach to the post-COVID recovery is framed within the context of the shared principles and values that brought the BRICS formation together. 
These include the principles of mutual respect, sovereign equality, democracy, inclusiveness, and strengthened collaboration. The BRICS formation has been somewhat of a significant global force, despite what all the commentators sometimes say in negative terms. And it enjoyed this uh, position even before the pandemic, particularly in its role of defending multilateralism and working toward a more representative, democratic, equitable, fair, and just international political and economic order. It is against this backdrop that BRICS has positioned itself to respond to the pandemic in a holistic and comprehensive manner, which I hope I will outline, based on building a global consensus around collaboration. So you will hear the concept collaboration and multilateralism consistently from all five members of the BRICS formation. In fact, I believe BRICS continues to support multilateralism and the central role of the United Nations in its response to the pandemic. Uh, all the BRICS countries have been supportive of the UN. We may quibble from time to time, but we believe the United Nations is the most representative global body in the multilateral sphere. We've not found that BRICS uh, is a forum for political point scoring or a race to profit from the pandemic. Instead, uh, the way we've worked is to seek collaboration aimed at ensuring that benefits flow to all of us, including to our continent, Africa, and the poorest and most marginalized who would need access to all that is available to address and reverse the effects of the pandemic. This inclusive approach of BRICS is reflected in the broad nature of the response as well. All tracks of the BRICS Corporation have been utilized in this year to address the impacts of COVID-19, including addressing the health, economic, and social devastation of the pandemic. You will see that this comes out very strongly in the Moscow Declaration of the BRICS Summit, where equal attention was paid to strengthening the three pillars of our cooperation, which are the areas of economy and finance, peace and security, and social and people-to-people -people exchanges. All the institutions of BRICS have also been mandated to play their part in responding to the pandemic. We believe that the BRICS Think Tank Council and Academic Forum are important track to institutional mechanisms of BRICS that enable interaction with key stakeholders in civil society and academia to support our work, particularly in terms of socioeconomic development and addressing the triple challenges South Africa wants to address of poverty, unemployment, and inequality. We believe that the fora established by BRICS, somewhat of its sub-formations, uh, could play a critical role in ensuring broader societal appreciation of the contribution an energized and well-coordinated BRICS could make to advancing a modern, inclusive international agenda of development. So we would think that as BRICS at the summit and policy level develops particular approaches, let's say the, the New Development Bank or other initiatives, then it is at the level of the contact with civil society where these are popularized so that our people argue for stronger interventions by these institutions and for greater international support of them. I think all of us appreciate the very unusual circumstances in which we find ourselves as we are forced to battle the devastating impact of COVID-19 in all facets of our work and our lives. The pandemic has significantly impacted on the ambitious agenda 
across all the three pillars of BRICS that I've referred to, uh, an agenda that had been announced by Russia at the beginning of its chairship, at the beginning of 2020. Russia entered 2020 enthused, energized, <laughs> to pursue a very vigorous and exciting uh, year of heading this institution. It has had to find creative ways along with the other BRICS countries of conducting our work, <clears throat> moving away from in-person conferences and negotiations to largely virtual formats. We had never, never anticipated we would work in this way. And I think all credit due to Russia that it managed to get the year's agenda done despite these very, very challenging uh, circumstances. Uh, having acknowledged then the impact of COVID-19, I must say there have been significant achievements. As some of you might have seen from the 12th Brick Summit that was held virtually uh, Tuesday last week. For example, the summit adopted the renewed BRICS strategy for economic partnership for the period 2020 to 2025. It also adopted uh, something we've been working on for some time, the BRICS counter-terrorism strategy and launched the BRICS Women's Business Alliance and the first projects of BRICS under the energy research platform. The Moscow Declaration reflects a significant array of decisions across a wide spectrum of areas of endeavor. I do recommend that all the participants read the declaration as it contains a number of paragraphs that focus on the topic of today's interaction. Well, naturally, the pandemic has helped to highlight the importance of our BRICS work in several key areas. For example, health technology, the digital revolution, under its new partnership for the new industrial revolution. Uh, action plans have been developed in the science, technology, and innovation sector that focus primarily on pandemics and specifically on COVID-19. There's also been work on cybersecurity. We've also begun to discuss developments with respect to the new development bank, particularly broadening its membership and ensuring that all regional offices of the NDB are open in the BRICS uh, regions. We also have made progress in agreement that we must hasten the establishment of the BRICS Vaccine Research and Development Center, which was agreed at the South Africa Summit in 2018. We've been working on it, planning, but we now need to concretely establish the center, given in particular this pandemic and the focus on vaccine research and development. The summit was held under the theme, BRICS Partnership for Global Stability, Shared Security and Innovative Growth. South Africa's participation at the summit led by our president was guided by a number of priorities that had been agreed between stakeholders and the cabinet and which we table as our key priorities for this year's summit. Firstly, it was reaffirming South Africa's support for multilateralism and respect for international law in the international system. As you know, multilateralism is facing challenges, is under great strain, and we as South Africa must ensure that we uphold it because it is only multilateral global institutions that can represent a common global voice. If we allow the breaking up of multilateral institutions, we will come under the force of very negative uh, institutions, which I think is something we must not permit. Hence, South Africa lifting out a strong affirmation of multilateralism and international law. A second was reaffirming South Africa's support for the restructuring of the global political, economic, and financial architecture to be more equitable and balanced. So this may sound contradictory 
We uphold multilateralism, but we're not saying the institutions are perfect. We continue to insist that they were established many decades ago, that the world has visibly and fundamentally altered, and that these new institutions, these old institutions, must take account of the new shape of the world and must reflect uh, these changes through being restructured to be more equitable and more representative of a vastly different world from that of the Second World War's end. The third was we proposed adopting a review of the Big BRIC strategy for its economic partnership leading up to 2025. So South Africa had proposed this refreshing. The fourth was we welcomed the ongoing cooperation in all pillars of the BRICS partnership, especially the tangible benefits for South Africa through science, technology, and innovation cooperation, through health and education cooperation, through trade, investment, and tourism cooperation, as well as through BRICS financing for infrastructure development, capacity building, research, education, and skilling opportunities. And all of these, <clears throat> excuse me, if the think tank examines them, you will find in each of them, we are beginning to make important advances. Our fifth was welcoming the ongoing contribution of the New Development Bank to address the health and economic consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. Sixthly, we also asserted the progress made toward the expansion of the NDB by proposing key African member states for inclusion in the NDB, as well as adding a list of prospective African member countries that we thought would be ready in a few years to become part of this family. We also had as our goal strengthening the relationship between the government track and the BRICS Business Council, the BRICS Women's Business Alliance, the New Development Bank, and the interbank cooperation mechanism, which draws together our central banks uh, in, in the uh, BRICS countries. And of course, collaboration with the Think Tank Council of BRICS, the Academic Forum and the BRICS Civil Forum. We felt that as the government track, we need to really be drawing these formations much closer together so that we draw on what they're doing and they also draw on some of the perspectives we hold in the policy uh, domain. We also uh, uh, insisted as South Africa that the initiatives we had led of engaging with non-BRICS member states through what we call the BRICS outreach and the BRICS plus uh, summits must be something that is continued by all chairs of BRICS. We, in 2011, when we first chaired, drew in all the countries of Africa to be part of the processes of BRICS to develop an understanding of what it is trying to do, what its key ideals and perspectives are, and each of the BRICS chairs have mirrored this activity of South Africa. So if you go to Asia, countries in that region close to India would be invited in. If you go to China similarly and so on. It was something we started and we feel it's very important because there is no value in us remaining as BRICS isolating ourselves from our neighbors or from our region and not utilizing our forum to build the stronger progressive alliance that could then engage together in global uh, affairs. Well, uh, as I said earlier, our countries have been impacted by the virus, but of course in very diverse ways. China was able to respond with very strict measures very speedily and managed to contain the virus. Russia was hard hit, but it had the capacity to focus on the science 
of this virus and is one of those that early on announced the potential development of a vaccine. The impact of the virus on the lives and livelihoods of our people requires a range of responses from Brazil and South Africa. We were quite hard hit. We are uh, the most perhaps poor in terms of science institutions uh, and in terms of ability to respond to the economic impacts. And so we do need to be thinking very, very carefully about how we better prepare our countries should future disasters of this nature uh, occur. India also was hard hit, particularly in terms of its micro uh, and small and medium sized uh, sector, where a large proportion of its population uh, works. So as these three uh, members of BRICS with a large segment of a vulnerable population, we have to focus on finding a vaccine and ensuring that it's accessible. And also on devising economic recovery strategies which address arthropod challenges of poverty, inequality, and very low levels uh, of employment in decent wage uh, uh, jobs. When one looks at the health front, this pandemic reminded us about the importance of research and innovation in the development of treatments and diagnostics, and the need to ensure for our populations affordable access to quality and effective healthcare and diagnostic tools. Uh, I think there's no better lesson than the pandemic toward the importance of research development and innovation. And I believe if there's anything South Africa should give attention to, it is that. Because if we don't, we remain vulnerable. It can't be that we are arguing with the world for vaccines to be a public good, but we are not able to devise a vaccine ourselves. We have the capability, we have the intellectual might, we have the institutions that can help us to do so. We lack much of this research, development and innovation capacity on the African continent. And I think we've got to ensure as we work within the African Union and SADC that we argue that it RDI must be the focus of our interventions post COVID recovery, if ever there will be a recovery. Our country, South Africa, remains committed to the establishment of the Vaccine Research and Development Center, as I said earlier, as this will be the foundation for the kind of innovative development we wish to see. We recognize that research and development of new vaccines and diagnostic tools now has to integrate other co-infections and comorbidities. To this end, we are very encouraged by the established and ongoing cooperation among BRICS experts to share best practice, as well as the work we are doing on the initiative for integrating digital technologies to improve the monitoring of cases in our countries. Our presence in BRICS has to support the creation of capacity so that we in South Africa and all of us on the African continent are able to freely act in response to future pandemics. Because often you found we had to pause and look around at who might help us, but we have to get ourselves to a point where we're able to say we have the capability, we will be able to respond. And I think, well, uh, 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 congratulations should go to President Ramaphosa because the marshalling of a coordinated African response was a very important first step in giving Africa the confidence that we can think through uh, this, this problem. We can together, uh, work at addressing it. And I think uh, what the AU uh, was able to do, led by the chair, was very, very significant. And I hope the think tank uh, will study uh, some of those developments and report on them in future. The health sector under BRICS has registered satisfactory progress in terms of cooperation at both public 
and private sector levels, and this is to be welcomed. To this end, the BRICS Ministers of Health recently exchanged country-level information on the situation related to the spread of COVID-19 and best practices in fighting it. They did this in order to collect and exchange data as well as shared in the analysis of statistical information in order to find the best practices in diminishing the impact of the disease. In line with our commitment to ensuring public health quality and access, the BRICS Ministers of Health affirmed the importance of ensuring the right to universal and equal access to health technologies through sharing of knowledge, intellectual property, and data necessary for COVID-19 detection, prevention, treatment, and response. So what the health uh, team has done is really to develop a framework for collaboration in a range of areas and has agreed that we will not allow any aspect holding of patent intellectual property to detract from the necessity uh, of, of collaboration. As a further response to the pandemic, the ministers noted the Russian proposal for an integrated early warning system for preventing mass infectious disease risks. This is in accordance with international health regulations. We also welcome the publication of the consolidated document, BRICS countries measures taken in the field of healthcare to counter the spread of the coronavirus disease, COVID-19. This document is available again uh, to be studied uh, by colleagues in the academic sector. As South Africa, we fully support the initiative by the World Health Organization, together with many governments, nonprofit organizations, and industry leaders to speed up the development and production of vaccines and therapeutics, and to ensure that they are distributed quickly, equitably, and affordably across the globe. This was emphasized by the BRICS leaders in their concluding statement at the summit. We as South Africa and all members of BRICS have cautioned against vaccine nationalism. We've stated that vaccines have to be treated as a global public good, accessible to all countries that require them on an equitable and affordable basis. For our part, we as South Africa are participating in several research initiatives with continental and international partners, including in the global effort to develop, manufacture and distribute a COVID-19 vaccine. Our Department of Science and Innovation has established an indigenous knowledge-based COVID-19 research team. The team is comprised of African medicines practitioners, of university colleagues, of the various science councils, and a number of relevant government departments. The focus of the team is on interfacing with healers, conducting agronomy studies, phytochemistry, in vitro and in vivo work, preclinical and clinical research, product development and manufacturing very exciting on indigenous knowledge base. The South African team has been given the privilege of chairing a regional expert committee of the World Health Organization in its African regional office. This committee is looking at COVID-19 and at the efficacy of African medicines. With the leadership of South Africa, the WHO Afro has developed master protocols for evaluation of phase three clinical trials on these uh, possible treatments. On the economic front, the BRICS countries have committed to strengthening cooperation 
through, among others, the adoption and implementation of the strategy for the economic partnership that I mentioned, the BRICS Mutual Customs Assistance Agreement. They've agreed on a review of the Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation in the Field of Competition Law and Policy. You can now see the advances that BRICS is making where countries that entered this formation as very sovereign nations are now beginning to move toward free trade areas uh, of policy. And of course, we welcome the launch of the BRICS Energy Research Cooperation platform. For South Africa, trade diversification remains a priority. And we believe multiple opportunities exist for South African trade with BRICS countries. Supporting diversification of our domestic industry will unlock multiple new opportunities for trade, especially in the production of machinery, uh, products in plastic, and electrical components. Furthermore, a more comprehensive account and development of non-tariff barriers is under discussion, potentially with monitoring of these on an ongoing basis. All of this is what we have uh, welcomed. I believe one of the most exciting developments that will be recorded in future is of course the New Development Bank. It continues to play a critical role in contributing to the ongoing efforts of BRICS countries to address the health and economic consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, including by way of uh, an emergency assistance facility of up to $10 billion, as well as the approval of loans to the BRICS countries of $4 billion, including an emergency assistance program of $1 billion to South Africa with a second package under consideration. Who would have believed when we were developing the idea of the NDB that we would be able to do this in this year of the pandemic? Well, dear colleagues, I believe the role of the BRICS Think Tank Council and the BRICS Academic Forum in strengthening expert dialogue and exchanges among the uh, academic community to promote future-oriented research policy analysis and knowledge sharing was something that was actually mentioned by the BRICS leaders at the summit. So they saw this role for the think tanks and the academic forum. Further, when you read the outcomes, you will fi find in paragraph 95, will you believe there are 95 paragraphs in the declaration? that the leaders called on the BRICS Think Tank Council to continue to improve its internal mechanism and strengthen its connection with BRICS government sectors and other institutions, including the New Development Bank and the BRICS Business Council. So I trust that the South African BRICS Think Tank will continue to engage us as governments to exchange knowledge and provide feedback and recommendations to improve on our engagements within BRICS. I also hope that our colleagues in the academic and scientific community will engage with their colleagues in the BRICS countries, but in the global community as well, to promote these very progressive ideals of inclusion that form part of the BRICS collaboration and objectives. So let me conclude by stating that BRICS remains critical to our post-COVID economic and social recovery. And in this regard, I wish to reiterate South Africa and BRICS commitment to sparing no effort in finding ways of mitigating the devastating effects of the pandemic and to addressing the ongoing challenges that confront many who are poor and vulnerable, certainly in our country and in at least two of the other countries of the BRICS family. So colleagues, I hope uh, I have uh, addressed or covered parts 
uh, of what uh, the think tank uh, expected. Uh, I am really thrilled to have been given the opportunity. I am pleased to see um, that an ambition of Russia, which was establishing the Women's Business Alliance has been achieved. Uh, we have nominated South African uh, women to serve as part of the council. And I'm hoping out of their work will come greater empowerment of women in business within uh, uh, the BRICS Forum. Uh, all of us should look as we work in the different tracks of BRICS at what contribution we can make to really achieving this crazy idea of building a global progressive unity, a forum that takes to the center of the stage of the world ideas that many people are afraid to make public that we take forward the notion of the freedom of people of Palestine and we place it in the BRICS forum. We don't all agree, but we're not afraid to place it there, nor are we stopped from placing it there and arguing that it must be in the statement, which you will find in the summit declaration. We take forward the interests of Africa and place them in that forum and ensure that that which we want to achieve as the true freedom of the continent from want and deprivation is recognized by all the members of that forum. So I hope in the work that you do, uh, you will help us to advance some of these objectives, which I believe are imperative for Africa, but for the world as well. Uh, Professor, let me stop there and thank you once again. Uh, it's been a great privilege and honor uh, to present uh, uh, this brief talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Much appreciated, Minister. Thank you very much. Um, that was quite a tour de force. That was quite insightful. Uh, Open up a lot of terrains for further elaboration. A um, lot of food for thought for those of us who are concerned with research that has direct impact on policy making and direct impact on uh, changing the circumstances of the peoples of the BRICS uh, on the ground. Um, thank you very much. That was uh, much appreciated. Um, with your permission, I would allow to. I would like you to allow me to read a, a, a few questions that have been put up here uh, for your comment. Um, uh, the first one relates to uh, the uh, huge problem of gender-based violence, uh, which has surfaced in a number of big countries. Um, in line with the BRICS' uh, focus on people's issues, um, might you want to comment on how that might be perhaps South Africa or BRICS' uh, position uh, generally on the question uh, of, 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 of attack on women, uh, which suppresses in all manner of things. The second one is a, an important issue of a, a BRICS museum, which perhaps might be linked to just the idea of preserving BRICS knowledge, some form of knowledge bank for BRICS. Um, we talk about it uh, this year in the BRICS think tank that we need to push very hard for the creation of a knowledge bank uh, so that BRICS information, uh, those who want to look for, researchers want to look for information on BRICS, right now have to go to University of Toronto for the most reliable database <laughs> in Canada. Um, uh, uh, for this, it's, it's unacceptable. It should be here, easily accessible, digitized. All these records that BRICS have put together uh, and, and all of that. So the idea of a museum, an archive, a data bank, I, I wonder what you think about it. And then a colleague uh, who is in the BRICS uh, think tank cluster on, on security uh, has asked uh, about whether the BRICS have harnessed the, the border tensions between China and India uh, to work out better ways of managing internal um, uh, 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 conflict, even going out. And the last one is on uh, climate change. Um, um, that as BRICS talk about transition, building back better, uh, to what extent does that factor in the idea of just transitions? Uh, the transitions that take um, uh, climate uh, climate impact uh, a lot more uh, seriously. 
Uh, I am sorry, somebody just squeezed in a question right now, a young woman. Um, uh, um, let's just ask a question about how can BRICS countries play a proactive role in strengthening regional value chains uh, generally across the board? Um, and I think that plugs into the, to the issue you highlighted, very welcome issue of BRICS Plus and how that becomes a regionalized BRICS global, uh, that the, the regional value chain will be the, perhaps the mechanism through which the BRIC plus might be maintained through concrete um, cooperation rather than mere solidarity, mere shared understanding. I hope that helps. Um, if Minister is, is able to comment on this, would be appreciated. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try uh, to comment, although I do think it's the think tank and the academic forum uh, that should be answering uh, uh, these questions. Uh, well, gender-based violence uh, is a problem throughout the world. Women uh, face violence everywhere, be it the most developed countries to the least developed. And so we do have a massive undertaking uh, that all of, all of us uh, should give attention to of addressing uh, gender equality, but also building safe and secure communities and environments for women. And it shouldn't be that women have to fight for this. This should be a natural phenomenon. But due to our social engineering, to our practices of toxic masculinity, and I think uh, to some degree to very little attention to the meaning of family, partnership, love, uh, uh, care for others. Uh, these are concepts we don't see enough when we talk about gender-based violence. It's possible that many men don't know how to be a caring partner, that they don't understand what love is. Um, uh, and that women sometimes, when the first instance of physical harm occurs, believe this is an expression uh, of, of care, whereas it's a real danger that they should be alert to and, and escape from. So all the BRICS countries recognize that we have a very serious problem of gender-based violence. And uh, some of us are taking steps to address uh, this phenomenon as South Africa is attempting to do. Uh, but I think there are still some countries that are closing their eyes uh, uh, to this problem and uh, that are not doing as much as uh, could be done by government to lead in the fight against gender-based violence. I think in South Africa, we do have a strategy directed uh, at enhancing uh, gender equality. Uh, we have seen women occupying spaces in society that we had not occupied before the advent of freedom. But even those spaces do not always remain uh, safe. I was in a webinar on uh, sexual harassment in the workplace yesterday, and it is clear from evidence uh, uh, presented that women continue to be under threat, even when they are professionals working in what should be a very safe space. So I think alongside the legal measures, we need to look at social measures as well, at how we change the thinking of individuals in society about each other and bring prominence to respect for human dignity and for, for equality in all our societies. So yes, work is being done. I would think uh, that yes, in the legal sphere and in the... Uh, 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 many uh, of the social development areas, you know, shelters are being provided, support to women as they get protection orders. There are some improvements there, but we need a fundamental alteration about how we perceive each other and how we are socialized about each other. Um, and all of our countries uh, suffer from an inadequacy uh, in this particular area. So we're working at it but there is still a lot of hard work that we need uh, uh, to do. On the idea of a museum or archive, well, uh, Professor Zondi, I just want to share with you for a moment 
how thrilled I was when Senegal announced last year that they were establishing a museum of African civilizations. And I thought, wow, Africa is waking up. And I think this notion of an archive or museum on bricks is absolutely something we should look at. And I know uh, that the NIHSS would be a very good forum uh, to you know, think through uh, what this might look like. And I'm sure the government would welcome proposals. Uh, perhaps uh, some of the universities could be identified as the repository uh, of this database. I would be interested in seeing some of the HBUs uh, uh, being the site uh, so that we develop their academic capacity uh, in new uh, areas of intellectual endeavor. So I think it's a fantastic idea, but I'm still keen on a museum of African art, uh, on you know, the notion of African civilization being represented and much more being done. But I think this is absolutely something that our institutions uh, would certainly be competent in. We could also look at how we might integrate this notion into the digital platform that we are developing as BRICS. So that could be of a, a great assistance in actually that digital, uh, uh, digitizing of all the documentation, the decisions, the declarations, the statements uh, of BRICS. And I have attended some of the academic fora. There have been really interesting papers presented. And I think digital resources are often very useful uh, 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 you know, ways of ensuring uh, that we, we preserve uh, a knowledge. Um, well, one of the things that I think we don't do in BRICS is bring um, national or sovereign issues to the table of BRICS. So we wouldn't bring the China-India tension. What would happen is China and India would be present in the meeting. They may not smile too readily at each other, but they will take the opportunity, the prime minister and the president of China, to have a bilateral and look at these issues in a, a setting uh, that might be less public and uh, uh, therefore less threatening uh, than uh, what is sometimes expected in a larger uh, forum. So BRICS serves as a space where we can, in a bilateral engagement, actually deal with very sensitive issues. As Minister of International Relations, I've seen this happen, uh, but it doesn't come to the round table of all uh, uh, the members uh, of BRICS. But certainly I believe uh, these discussions do occur uh, behind closed doors. All of us have bilateral meetings, every BRICS summit, uh, and uh, we discuss uh, issues of each country's relationship with each other and ways in which we could improve what we are doing uh, in BRICS. On climate change, um, I hope uh, uh, one would be able to get a copy uh, of the statement uh, made by President Xi Jinping of China. He made particular com commitments in response to the Paris uh, Climate Change Agreement and indicated he will be making these announcements at the next meeting on the treaty. Uh, they've set very ambitious targets, uh, not only for China, but to assist uh, developing countries in beginning to meet our obligations uh, and ensuring uh, that we do address mitigation and adaptation with access to technology uh, potentially provided by China or resources that they would make available through the New Development Bank. So certainly climate change forms an important part uh, of what we deliberate upon uh, as the BRICS uh, uh, countries. And uh, we do believe the Paris Agreement was one of the better agreements out of the treaty uh, uh, conferences. And we are looking forward to the uh, conference which will be hosted by the UK uh, uh, next year and of course, Everybody is now asking for more ambitious uh, commitments. We've said we agree, but remember who we are, remember our abilities. And of course, we would like to make advances, but we need the resources, we need the technology access to be able to make the progress that everybody is talking about. So don't impose huge obligations on Africa 
when you're not prepared to bring the financing that has been proposed over so many years into play to ensure that we are able to execute uh, 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 those uh, programs. So just transition is a key area. We know we're still gonna use some old uh, uh, technologies and resources which may not be as efficient uh, in terms of reduction of emissions, but in order to transit uh, to something new, our inability needs to be recognized and uh, supported. Um, I think uh, the economic partnership strategy that we've adopted really sees the uh, regional value chains as an important part of what we need to build. So we would like to see ourselves building on our strengths. So for example, we believe um, that you know, we should be looking at an OPEC on platinum, for example, South Africa and Russia. Why, why can't we, we, we be talking about that in a much more ambitious fashion uh, than has ever been done? And uh, that that would draw in uh, countries such as Zimbabwe and others that are holders of vast reserves of platinum and that do very little value addition, very little technological research. And if we can build a cohort of countries that then strengthen industrial and manufacturing capability, we then enhance Africa's uh, uh, potential for being a key global economic uh, uh, player. So these are matters we have discussed and I hope South Africa is gonna lead, uh, certainly uh, in, in the mining and uh, value addition or beneficiation uh, sector. I'm very excited. Uh, that we've now uh, begun to do more on the mining research area. And I think this begins to take us then into leadership in certain key areas that our continent uh, can certainly have a more significant uh, a role in. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Prof Sondi. I hope uh, that uh, addresses it. I saw that, uh, uh, I think it was the Institute offered that they are ready to discuss the idea of a, an archive uh, on BRICS through the academic forum. So there's an offer there and the colleagues can follow up in that way. It would be great if we lead in that regard.